back in the cantina now with Howard Rothman, who is the EVP of Franchise Management at Lucasfilm. Yep. Uh, for a very long time, you were the head of licensing. Yes. Uh, explain to us a little bit about what that means. I think I understand licensing. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, franchise is kind of everything that touches Star Wars. I mean, okay. the, the beauty of Star Wars is that people experience it in so many different ways. They experience it on the screen, they experience it in TV shows, in merchandise, in our books, in video games, in the theme parks. So it's very important that all that kind of fit t together because yeah. Everything that we do at Lucasfilm is from the point of view of what is the fan experience. You know, gotcha. what, what is it going to be like to live in the in, in the world of Star Wars and express your your Star Wars fandom? So it's very much. Uh sort of opportunities come up, things whether, like you said, whether it's uh, like the Marvel comics that mm -hmm. just started coming out or mm -hmm. a new TV series or video games or anything, and you guys kind of look at it and go, is this cool? Is this cool? That, that, <laughs> that's one of the many steps. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, you know, everything from what does our style guide look like? What yeah. kind of artwork are we putting on uh, on our products? How do, how do we translate the new things that are coming in the new film? Um, it's it's deep, it's complicated, yeah. and I have to say it's a lot of fun, too. It's got to be a really, really amazing time to be doing what you do at Lucasfilm because there's so much amazing new stuff. I mean, obviously, yeah. we're looking at Episode 7, we're looking at the trailer that mm -hmm. came out today, but there are so many other things oh, yeah. on the horizon yeah. just in the next year. Yeah. Well, and you'll hear about a lot of it over the next few days at, at Celebration. But, you know, I've been doing this for 35 years, so I've seen a lot of different periods that we've been in, and this is the most exciting but by far. Yeah. And you've been, uh, you've been to every Celebration? I've been to every domestic one, okay. and I was also in Essen. Yeah. Uh, and tell me, like, what is the atmosphere like here? specifically this year in comparison to celebrations in the past? I think there's so much anticipation around The Force Awakens. It's kind of galvanized people in a really nice way. Yeah. And also, now that we're so far into Star Wars with, you know, three generations, you see it here. You see parents with kids. You see people from every walk of life. It's really nice. And that's got to be fascinating for you as you're sort of evaluating what to put the Star Wars name on, that now you're talking about so many different age brackets yeah. and what is appropriate for who how do you decide like okay this is for everyone this is star wars well we we look at what's of interest to people at different points in, in their life mm -hmm. you know there, there's a point where you know people like to read uh novels for adults that tell stories in different ways there's video games that appeal to like a core gamer that yeah. are you know 18 and, and older but there's also video games that that younger kids like. And it's important to have something for all the different types of Star Wars fans that we have out there. We got a, uh, we got a ball droid coming? <laughs> we got one of those ball droids coming, Howard? You know, there's a lot of fun things that you could do with BB-8. And I promise you, if, if it's something that can be done that's fun, we're going to mm -hmm. do it. So uh, since you're see, you see everything Star Wars probably before anybody else does, I mean, is it still, when you walk around on this floor, are you still excited just kind of seeing all this stuff all around? Or is there anything that it, surprises you? It is you? so inspiring to walk around here mm -hmm. because you see the love that people have for Star Wars. You see how profoundly it's affected their lives what they're expressing here the everything from the artwork to the costumes that the people wear to just the sense of community here it says a lot really says a lot when uh, when I look around at the floor one of the things that I think is wonderful about Lucasfilm and about Star Wars is you guys really do embrace the community in terms of there are people here who are making their own R2 units. Mm -hmm. There are, you know, you have the 501st making their own Stormtrooper mm -hmm. armor. Mm -hmm. And you guys really seem to embrace that, mm -hmm. which a lot of companies don't do. How is it was how did you guys come into that? Was that just organic or was that a conscious decision from the beginning? It was very conscious. Yeah. And I think th this was something that, you know, George Lucas obviously created Star Wars and he understood Star Wars fandom very deeply. Um, and he realized that, you know, this is about community because there yeah. is a community of people who share a love for Star Wars and who have kind of experienced it and lived it through all these stages of their lives. Yeah. And you don't want to shut that down. That, that this is about expressing love for, for something that's meaningful to your life and you don't want to, you know, 
regulated in, in that way. It's not corporate. Well, that's awesome. I really, I really love that philosophy, and I love everything that you guys are doing. I'm going to get a salacious crumb clock. I saw that. <laughs> I'm really excited that that there, happened. There is some great <laughs> stuff at that store, I have to say. Well, that's great. Howard, thank you yeah. so much for taking a few minutes out of your day to talk to us. Uh, coming up in just a moment, Kathleen Kennedy will be sitting down in the cantina with us, so stay tuned for more live coverage of Star Wars Celebration. Tina with JJ Abrams. Oh, that's good. After you release the trailer, you want that kind of reaction from people, right? Uh, it's incredible.